Oh, and baby, hey, I just met you, and this is crazy, but here's my number, so call me maybe, it's hard to look right at you, baby, but here's my number, so call me maybe, hey, I just met you, and this is crazy, but here's my number, so call me maybe, and all the other boys, try to chase me, but here's my number. Marcus, so call me maybe. what are you doing? Tell you what I'm doing. Look, I heard that song by Carly Ray Jepsen, Call Me Maybe, a few weeks ago, and it got me thinking about nicknames. Now, I know that that song, as far as I know, has got nothing to do with nicknames at all, but Call Me Maybe. Now, I'll tell you something interesting. When I am typing up promotional posts for our show, and I type in, it's Paul and Marcus, it brings up predictive text and instead of saying it's Paul and Marcus it comes up it's Paul and maybe now you just, <laughs> it's true it's true but it got me thinking about nicknames and I've had a few in my time and I think you probably have had some as well now I told you the other week I think I told you this before but I had a nickname back in Ballet Money so on a Monday night after a council meeting because I would go to the Bally Money Borough Council to report for the paper you see and the meetings usually ended just before midnight and if they did there was time to go to the Chinese takeout which closed oh, at around right. half past twelve that sort of time on a, on a Monday and I always ordered the same thing and after ordering the same dish every week for a few weeks all I had to do was walk in and they would just say, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> ah, king prawn. Yes, I became known. <laughs> oh my God, that was so bad. No, that's true, but that's what, it was, ah, king prawn. So I was the king prawn, mm -hmm. right, 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 right. And then at one point before I changed my name to man, I had my, my maiden name was McCollum and I had a halfway house name of McCollum Man. So I was Marcus McCollum Man. And when I worked at, I think it was at the, uh, where was it? The, the Echo. Yeah, no, it was the Echo in, in, in Basildon. I think they called me Eminem there or someone did. Maybe it was at Teletext as well, but I was definitely called Eminem and Eminem and Eminem. And then I ditched the McCollum because it was just... Too, too much long. of a mouthful, and we wanted to have the same name. But you've had some nicknames in your time as well, haven't you, Paul? Yeah. Maybe you don't want to share those. No, it's quite all right. Um, so we learned um, Spanish back growing up, and I took it for five years, and then my brother and sister call, like to call me Pablo, because that means... Paul in Spanish and it did kind of annoy me and it's I'm not saying that I'm annoyed when I hear them refer to me as that but I think there's like a oh let's let's what, try to get under Paul? his skin or something doesn't your brother call you pabs as well yeah I've heard that as well. there is like variations of there's it. like Variations of um, Pobs, Pablo, P, I, I don't know, like, the, the, it's just, um, it's just one of them things growing up. But nothing sort of rude or anything. We Was there anything, anything that annoyed you at school, can you think? Or maybe you don't want to reveal that. Well, I think that those things were kind of derogatory. <laughs> oh, well, maybe let's not go there. <laughs> but I thought it was just interesting to see where nicknames came from. And it says here on the Britannica website that nicknames played a significant role before the 13th century in England, where surnames were uncommon. Hmm. Now, this is interesting. Physical characteristics played a significant role in nicknaming as people were identified by names of descriptive terms, such as barefoot, 
brown and Russell, which meant red haired, you see. So that's where the names that, you know, um, Russell, do you know anyone uh, who's Russell? Well, I'm thinking of Russell Grant, but that's that's a first name rather than a last name. But Russell is also a surname. And Barefoot, well, I haven't heard of anyone Barefoot apart from the Barefoot Contessa. Who's Ina Garden. Yeah, and I don't know, why should, does she walk in Barefoot or something? When she's I, doing... I think that she gets close to the food and close to nature, maybe. I don't know. Oh, right. Um, it goes on to say that the practice of assigning nicknames has played a major role in childhood in different contexts. And as, as you said, derogatory, I suppose, impacting social cohesion and forging groups within the classroom. In nicknames, their origins and social consequences, which was written in 1979, the year that you were born, Paul. You know, I think maybe they use nicknames to like maybe hide what they're doing from the authorities. So I think that that's what well, we used when we were trying to speak in like a oh, code cool. for like the teachers or my parents or something. But in this book that I just mentioned, Nicknames, Their Origins and Social Consequences, 1979, Jane Morgan, Christopher O'Neill and Rom Harry distinguish between internal and external formulations. The former stems from features of the language itself, such as rhyming with a given name, whereas the latter originates in extra linguistic variables, such as intellectual, behavioural and physical traits, as well as traditions, events and stereotypes. Well, yeah, so contemporary nicknames in the English language also involve clipping or truncation, as exemplified by Sam for Samantha or Dan for Daniel. And sometimes letters Y or IE are added to convey a sense of familiarity or intimacy, such as in Danny or Sammy. And I can remember when I worked at the Oxford Mail, um, my boss, who I got on with very well and I like very much, I'm still in touch with occasionally, he truncated names to the bare minimum to the first letter actually oh. now i was never just mm. Mm. <laughs> but there were some people there was there was definitely a j and l and <laughs> I, who else i'm just going through the al alphabet but there was i can remember the j so yeah it's quite interesting how names have developed and of course um my full name has been truncated down to man over the ages <laughs> What are you saying, dear? I know what you're saying. You're saying, why don't you subscribe to Paul and Marcus's show on YouTube? Please subscribe. You know, I really don't like it when they add the Y in the back of my name. So Polly. it's like Polly. So that, like, ugh, that is like worse than the Pablo thing. Like, like Polly is like, oh, what, what, no. Well, I was it thinking that... just aggravates me to yeah. the next level. I think where, where I think that there is like some, like I think some people know how to push your buttons, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know what someone has to say to you, but like if they say maybe Mark or something. Well, I was just going to say. I mean, you you can't add an I a, an I or a Y to mine to be Marcusy, but I have. Marcosy. <laughs> well, I've been Marky before. I don't mind Marky so much, but Mark I don't like because that's not my name, and I've got nothing against the name Mark. But Marky, if you want to do that, well, <laughs> it yeah, sounds a bit different. That's all right. That's you. If you do call me that, I would think that you were my friend. So, all right. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Thanks for watching the show. If you like the episode. Wanna hit the like button? For those of you that haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, Ding! please. We do really like it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And don't forget to leave any comments that you think might help improve our show. Thank you. Call me, maybe. <laughs> See you next time. Bye.